This is MBN Network Media, news for all races, connecting you to the world. This is MBN Network. When bank fraud has increased with the Yahoo Yahoo uh, uh, business that the young people are doing, but more importantly, it is to increase in fraudulent activities in customers' accounts. The aim here is to increase punishment to up to uh, uh, 20 years imprisonment to serve as a deterrent so that this upsurge we are seeing today in fraudulent activities in bank accounts will drop to minimum or even eliminated completely. Go back now to our first conversation. Well, the signing of the Finance Act 2021 into law by President Muhammadu Buhari on 31st of December uh, brought further sweeping changes to the Nigerian tax regime with, not, uh, uh, with notable implications for uh, businesses across various sectors, and the educational sector was not uh, included. Uh, to drill down on this, now we have uh, yesterday Filani, uh, Senior Manager, Tax Advisory and Regulatory Services at Anderson. Great to have you on the program. Good morning. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so uh, the way the finance bill is, uh, you know, set up the acts from the bill to the act, you know, it, it's quite confusing, you know. For, for those of us that don't understand, uh, can you break it down? Because I know it, it's, it first started in 2019. Yes, so what happened was that um, we had issues, long legislative process, you know, to amending tax laws. So um, part of the initiatives initiative of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, that's PEBEC, you know, to um, aid the ease of doing business was to introduce, you know, this um, only bus bills or finance bills to kind of hasten the process, you know, of um, providing the necessary amendments. So what you have, first of all, is the bill, and which is sent along with the appropriation um, bill, and when it is passed into law, it now becomes an act of the National Assembly. Right, and we, well, we're calling it the 2021 Act, because that's when it was... It was passed in 2021. Okay. I agree, but, you know, since the introduction, you know, 2019, what is your overall, you know, assessment of the tax system? Okay. Um, I would say that the 2019 Bill or Act, you know, was actually necessary, you know. It was a fast, quick process of amending and introducing necessary changes, you know, to promote um, ease of doing business and obviously to also help um, the tax system and the fiscal system. Um, and year on year, you know, we've also had the um, Finance Act that goes with a Propitiation Bill. It's a good initiative. However, um, you now have to question the ease of understanding the tax system in Nigeria because essentially, for you to be sure of how um, in your taxing regime or how certain things apply to you, you have to look at the fine. You have to look at the acts. So, say for instance, the Companies Income Tax Act, the Finance Act 2019, 20, and 2021. So it becomes a bit um, cumbersome, you know. Um, I think one of the things that the FRS has also tried to do is to ensure that with each um, amendment, they actually do a compilation, you know, so that it's clear. Um, I know that prior you could go to their website and actually have the um, full um, act, you know, which also includes the amendments that have been introduced by the Finance Act. Quite interesting. And, you know, looking at, uh, the, talking about the Federal Inland Revenue Service, now we see they achieved 100% uh, revenue target for 2021, you know, despite the issues of the pandemic, quite interesting. Um, how would you describe uh, ease of uh, paying taxes, you know, right now compared to, you know, years before? Well, um, one of the key things that was introduced, you know, last year is the um, Tax Pro Max, which is essentially deploying technology to ease um, filing and remittances of tax. Because what you find is that there are actually, you know, companies uh, that want to comply, but the, it could be cumbersome, you know. So right now you can just sit down from the comfort of your office, file your returns, you know, and make payments online, you know, seamlessly. And this would have been one of the contributors, you know, to helping to ease the tax system and, you know, contributing to FRS achieving 100%, you know, which is remarkable. Yeah, 100%, but, but does that uh, translate to compliance? Well, 
it, it, to what it, extent? <laughs> well, it could because the, the point is that the avenue is now there. You know, you can now leverage technology to ease compliance. Um, there would have been other factors. For instance, um, the VAT rate was reviewed, you know, to 7.5%, which means more revenue. And there would have been other um, factors, the benchmark, you know, for crude oil as well. You know, the prices of crude oil did better than what we had benchmarked. So those would have been other contributory factors to achieving 100%. But quite interesting. It's commendable. Yeah, quite think. interesting. Uh, but b before the enactment of the Finance uh, Act uh, 2021, you know, companies engaged in educational activities, you know, were exempt from uh, paying company income tax. But uh, it seems uh, that's uh, changing now. Well... I will not say they were exempt completely because we have always had it in the tax law an exempt status for educational institutions, you know, um, of a public character or engaged in um, or public character. So the general notion was that these educational institutions were exempt from paying tax. But we did have um, two cases, you know, where the federal, the, LR, the FIRS, you know, um, assessed companies to tax. The first one was the American International case, you know, which was taken to the Tax Appeal Tribunal. And the tribunal held in that case that because um, AIS was set up as a company limited by guarantee, that's essentially a company that cannot distribute um, profits, you know, by the very nature of the way it is set up, you know, and that the FRS also did not establish that it was not of a public character. Merely charging fees, you know, cannot constitute not being of a public character. It held that, you know, they were exempted for tax from tax. However, we had another case in Best um, Children International. It was a company limited by shares. A company limited by shares can distribute um, profit or dividend, you know, to its shareholders. It's essentially a profit-making venture. And um, that case went all the way to the Court of Appeal, you know, where the Court of Appeal held that. Because it was a company limited by shares, it means that there's an intention to make profit, you know, and distribute profit, and such company should pay tax, you know, under the law. So this was even prior to um, the amendment introduced by the 2021 Finance Act. So, so as it looks... Uh right now? Does it mean, you know, educational institutions will actually be paying tax? So, um, we actually had to um, analyze that critically, you know. So, what had happened in the 2021 Finance Act, you know, that portion, so you have um, charitable organizations, ex ex existential, existential yeah, organization yeah, and um, educational, but educational organization was now deleted, you know. So, I mean, off the top of your head, it now means, oh, if you're an educational institution, does that mean that you're not liable to tax? Um, you know, we looked at it and we said, well, maybe, maybe not. Because looking at the entire situation, I mean, one of the reasons that people are forced to go to private schools, you know, is because um, the public schools do not necessarily have the infrastructure, the teachers are not, you know, well compensated. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an area that is struggling. So um, there's, an, there's a school of thought that believes that shouldn't you encourage, you know, um, both local foreign um, investors to actually participate more actively to develop that sector. So it's not so much about profit or no, but it's about development of the sector. Tertiary institutions right now, you even have Nigerians going to neighboring African countries, you know, to for um, tertiary um, education because of strikes, you know, and all that. So, you know, there's that dynamics, you know. But um, it's important for um, educational institutions to review, you know, their structure and um, see how this amendment would apply. Is it, is it because the, the private schools, you know, seem to be making more money? Is that why, you know, the, the government is looking at, you know, taxing them? Well, obviously, um, the... Any business, you know, is supposed to pay tax because it's a social contract. You know, the government has its own part to play. We as citizens also have our own part to play and, you know, you should pay tax. But of course, that um, generally, and I think all over the world, charitable, if you're set up, you know, for charitable purposes, it means that you're there for the public, you know, for the greater good, societal good, then you're usually exempt from tax. So um, the government trying to put these things in place, you know, there's no yes or no. 
you know, answer to this on whether it's right, you know, or it's not right. But, um, you know, it needs to be reviewed holistically, you know, and then the necessary interpretations, you know, to the law should also be provided, you know, by both the FIRS and, you know, it may even require further okay. amendments to okay. provide clarity. Okay, take for instance, you know, I'm, I'm an educational institution now and I registered initially to, you know, distribute shares. Um, currently, what, what are my options right now, you know, if I, you know, want to navigate this uh, new law? So if you register as a company, um, um, if if you are a limited liability company, right, meaning that you have shareholders and all that, it means that you had an intention to share profits, and you're not, um, you're not for profits, you know. So you are now <laughs> liable to tax, you know, um, irrespective of our feelings or anything, you know, the law is the law. It means that you need to review your position and, you know, start complying with the law if you hadn't been complying before, because I'm not even sure you had an exempt status, you know, previously based on the decision in Best Children International. Right, so that means I'm stuck, you know, with my initial uh, registration. So if I'm, if I'm trying to actually register right now, mm -hmm. what, what should I be looking at? So, um, first of all, you have to look at your objective. You understand? Are you there for profit or not for profit? If you're not for profit, then there are other um, forms, you know, that you can take. Um, you can maybe register as an incorporated trustee, you know, which means you essentially have trustees and um, you have a constitution that guides, you know, how the organization or the school is run. So, so those are some of the options that you know, can be explored. But of course, you have to take a holistic look at, you know, your objectives. Yeah. As an it's quite right interesting, but how do you see this impacting, you know, the educational sector as a whole? Because, you know, my first thought is tuitions are going to go up. Well, um, that's, that's maybe part of the unintended um, consequences. And that's why for us, um, you know, there's a school of thought that believes that this needs to be looked at further, you know, um, look at the bigger picture and say what exactly are we trying to promote, you know, as a government. We know that um, education is an area that requires a lot of focus, you know, from a government perspective. So how can we even encourage and develop the educational sector in Nigeria? All right, but what are your expectations for compliance right now? Expectations, um, <clears throat> just as I said, first of all, as an institution or educational institution, review your position, even, you know, engage your tax consultants, be sure of what exactly your your um, your form and where you should lie. Are you a company? You know, are you limited by shares? Are you limited by guarantee? Are you an incorporated trustee? That's, you know, part of what you should look at. And of course, if you're a company limited by shares, because, I mean, there are also people that say, oh, even these private schools, they charge so much, you know, they should actually, you know, pay tax. You know, there, there are some people that believe that you have to review your position and, as I said, the law is the law. You have to comply. Yeah. There's nobody that is above the law. Exactly. And, you know, with all these uh, policies, you know, talking about, you know, foreign investment in that sector, how do you see this? How do you see the foreign investors reacting to this? Um, if, you're an, if you're an investor, then you're there to make profits. As an investor, you should expect to comply with the laws of, you know, the jurisdiction where you're invested and pay tax, you know. If you go to other countries, you invest and you pay tax. But if you do come in as an NGO, for instance, then there are certain concessions, you know, charitable that are given to those kind of um, charitable um, initiatives, you right. know. And as I said, if you're properly set up, then you would still enjoy the exempt status. All right, looking at other sectors now, are there any other surprises, you know, from the Finance Act? Oh, well, <laughs> you, you have to do a whole um, holistic uh, review, you know, the, of the um, Finance Act. One of the key um, introductions is um, that before um, shares, you know, transfer of shares was yeah. not liable okay. to capital gains tax, you know, but um, that has been reintroduced, you know, there's now 10% capital gains tax, but there are certain conditions, you know, so it's not in all cases that you'd be liable to um, capital gains tax, you know, there's a threshold of 100 billion, 
you know, and all that. Um, I think that the exemption was initially introduced, you know, to encourage investments, you know, but um, we also need the revenue, you know, as a country. So you always have to balance. Yeah, because right now the government is uh, seeking for uh, revenue. But you know, what's your outlook? It's twenty twenty two. You know, what's your outlook for you know tax system in Nigeria? Well, looking at um, 2021, you know, where we ended up, you know, meeting 100%, I think um, the prospects are high, you know, more people are understanding um, more about the tax system and the need to also um, do their part, you know, pay their taxes. Um, the FRS is also uh, being more um, intentional, you know. Um, one of the key things, you know, for us as an organization, you know, where we have various discussions is that, they should have tried to expand, you know, tax nets rather than focusing on the people that are already compliant, you know. So this also gives them the opportunity to expand the tax we'll nets. We have the informal sector, you know, and um, <laughs> you know, a couple of other syntaxes yes. you know, coming up with the, uh, that one on the sugar, sugar consumption and sugar manufacturing. All right, well, uh, it's, uh, we'll keep watching, you know, how the education sector reacts you know, it's still uh, early times, you know, right now. We'll see how stakeholders and the government actually discuss and come to an agreement at some point. All right, Aditi Deflani, uh, Senior Manager, Tax Advisory and Regulatory Services at Anderson. It was great having you on the program today. Thank you very Thank much you. for having me.
This is NBN Network Media, news for all races, connecting you to the world.